Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Talladega Super Speedway. We're going to go ahead and get started with our uh, pre-race driver media availabilities for the Fred's 250 NASCAR Camping World Truck Series Chase Cutoff Race. Uh, joining us this morning, we have the driver of the number 17 Red Horse Race in Toyota, Timothy Peters. Tim, you're the two-time defending race winner here. Uh, won last year's race from the pole position. Any secrets to success at Talladega Super Speedway you want to share with the, the guy to your right and left? Uh, I don't know if there are any secrets other than the fact that we have a really good team. And, um, you know, I think all of us will uh, agree that, you know, the shop is uh, where you win all your races. But more importantly, on super speedways, uh, you know, it's how hard the guys have uh, have worked to massage on not only my truck, but every, everybody's team in the garage area. So um, we've built a great notebook over the last several years. And, um, you know, when you come to these enough, you kind of know the do's and don'ts. So hopefully I can keep uh, keep learning every time we get out on racetrack. We're also joined by the driver, the number 19 draw tight Ford, Daniel Hemrick. Daniel, you're coming off a, a runner-up finish at Las Vegas. Uh, you've had nine top five finishes this season. What's it going to take to get that first win at this critical moment in the chase? Yeah, obviously coming here, it's its own battle in itself. But um, you talked about the nine top five finishes. That's something that we've been very fortunate to be able to bring really fast Ford F-150s to the track. And like Timothy was stating, you know, all that stuff starts back at the shop. So um, in order to win now, we just got to keep doing what we're doing, not really change anything we've done up to this point. Um, everybody says you put yourself in position enough that it'll all work out. So uh, we're just going to keep doing that. Um, obviously, um, you know, it's a little more critical here. The guys back at the shop, the engine department, everybody that really massage on their trucks, uh, really going to play a, that much more of a critical role. Um, but it's good to be here for now my fourth Super Speedway race and know a little bit of the ins and outs, like Timothy was talking about, the do's, the don'ts, um, who, who to work with, maybe who to separate yourself from. And um, like I said, just look forward to learning a little bit more and trying to figure out a way to get our jobs done tomorrow. And we're also joined by the driver of the number eight Fire Alarm Services Chevrolet, John Hunter Nemechek. John Hunter, you said you're glad to be here at Talladega where anything can happen. Uh, what's the key to making your own luck and, and avoiding other folks' misfortune? Uh, it's tough. Everything here is kind of out of your hands. Um, it all starts back at the shop with the guys of how, uh, how they prepared your truck for the weekend. Um, but being at Talladega in the spot that we're in with, with the chase standings being 15 points out, um, I think it's way better um, for me to be able to come here to Talladega where anything can happen. Um, I mean, if we finish top five and someone else got caught up in somebody else's wreck and we didn't, um, we'd have a shot to make it compared to if you're at a mile and a half racetrack or short track, um, they can ride around all day and kind of salvage a finish to where they make sure that they make it. So Talladega, um, really looking forward to getting on racetrack today. It's only my second super speedway race. So hopefully I can learn, or third super speedway race so hopefully I can learn some more today um, in practice about drafting throughout the race and uh, hopefully put ourselves in position tomorrow to get that checkered flag excellent we'll open it up to questions for our three championship contenders if you raise your hand we'll get a microphone to you and we'll start right here with Matt Weaver Matt Weaver AutoWeek.com for John Hunter and Daniel have you guys given the situation that you find yourselves in started to, to call in any favors or talk to other drivers about trying to link up and you know get pushed towards the front on Saturday um, I haven't quite called in any favors or anything like that. Um, I think that if we were to be able to qualify up front and run up front all day, um, as long as we put ourselves in a position to be top four at the end where you can make a move um, coming to the start finish line, I think you'll be all right. But um, who knows? Uh, hopefully we'll make some friends today during practice and see how everybody's trucks are, how they draft, and um, you'll kind of go from there. Yeah, go? So, oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I feel like the same thing. Um, you know, John Hunter and I both have like done a good job establishing our names in this series to get guys like Timothy and Kraft and everybody to work with us if the opportunity presents itself. Um, but as far as calling in favors, you just got to, like I said, hope you have speed. And if you have speed, it's crazy how much help you get. So um, if we can have speed, that's a big part of, of having success here this weekend. We'll go over here to the right to Lee, and then we'll come back to the middle. Lee Spencer, motorsport.com. Um, Timothy, the veterans, or being a veteran, has really paid off for Jimmy Johnson and Kevin Harvick on the Cup side. Do you feel that that's going to be to your benefit as well in trucks? I think so, for sure. Um, again, when you 
when you can come as uh, as many times as I've been able to come since being able to be in the Camping World Truck Series, you, you learn what to do and what not to do. And uh, having the success that I've been able to have the last couple of years, but, uh, you know, Red Horse has won this race uh, since 2012, with the exception of 2013. So, um, you know, I feel like getting friends is going to be pretty easy. It's just... Uh, it's like everywhere else you go, the last lap is every man's for himself. So we just come in here this, you know, and do our deal today. Uh, tech has been has been pretty tough across the board. And, uh, uh, you know, when we get out on the racetrack, uh, we'll see what our Toyota Tundra has. Um, you know, and hopefully tomorrow we can we can go for three in a row. And then, um, you know, Sunday is Toyota's 1000th start in NASCAR. So uh, very proud to be a part of the, the family and, and hoping that the experience will pay off. We're going to go up front here to Bob, then Stan. Uh, Bob Parker, CSPN. Uh, for John and Daniel, I don't want to mess with your heads at all, but I'm curious on this last lap, you've seen drivers push the no push rule at the end. How do you balance how much to push and possibly putting your chase hopes into a NASCAR official's hands? Yeah, I feel like it's, it's definitely a double-edged sword there. Um, but for John Hunter and I, we know that the guys back at the shop, everybody we bring to the racetrack with us all the way up to the point of this season to get to this point all relies on that last lap. Um, I like to say that from my particular situation that I feel like I'll do everything I can for not only myself and my guys to make sure we advance. So if that means maybe getting a little aggressive when it comes to, to pushing pushing that envelope of, of what's too much, um, I think it's fair to say that both of us will probably be on that same edge of what's right and what's wrong there. So um, obviously just hope that hope that we're on the, the winning side of that deal and, and we don't you know get called uh, the black flag or whatnot for, for tandem or whatever you want to call it. But um, you know, at the end of the day, your whole season could be based off this one moment, that one lap. So um, it's going to be on the fly decision to be able to do what we think is right to not only propel ourselves, but our guys to the next round. Yeah, I'm right there with Daniel um, from the, the spur of the moment. Um, if you're in position to push and be able to go across the finish line first, you're going to do everything that you can, um, especially in our situation, being 15 points back or whatever. Um, like he said, this can determine the rest of your season if you move on to the next round. And um, it, it could mean that you could be in the Final Four at Homestead. Um, it could mean that you couldn't. But um, I, I think that both of us are going to do whatever it takes um, at the end of the race to make sure that we get that checkered flag. Go down swinging. That's all you can do. <laughs> yep. We'll go to Stan, then over to Chris. Stan Creekmore with Outside the Box. This is really for all three of you. Given that your schedule is so many different tracks and Talladega kind of stands out on its own, what's the greatest thing you've learned in racing at this track that really helps you everywhere? Uh, you know, it, it, it gives you discipline here. Uh, you know, I, I think Yellow Line is your friend across the board in all, all three of the series uh, when they race here. And, you know, it teaches you discipline. Uh, even now, you know, uh, you look out the rearview mirror more than you do the windshield, for sure. And uh, uh, your spotter plays a big key. That helps you at other tracks that you go to as far as the communication. If there's any gaps, it, you know, it, it helps that. Um, but the biggest thing is, is discipline. It, uh, you know, you got to be very alert. And, you know, that it seems to, to help me at other tracks. Yeah, I agree with Timothy there. Um, he talked about communication. It's something that... Um, the discipline and to have that level of communication under really intense situations only helps all the other racetracks we go to. So if you can come to a place like Talladega and, and keep the heart rate down and, and keep everybody mindful of the situation you're in, um, when you go your mile and a half, it makes the weekends a, a lot easier, I feel like. I know running my first super speedway race, I was mentally worn out last year. Um, just from all the information I was getting, um, not ever doing it before, you don't know what to expect going into it. So uh, I think from the mental preparation to the communication side with your spotter, um, as you run more races, you get more familiar with him. Um, being able to communicate under intense situations um, from making pit stops, uh, what your truck's doing, whatever it may be, um, can definitely help you everywhere else that you go. And we'll go over to the right to finish up with Chris Knight. Chris Knight, CatchFence.com. I was just curious about your guys' strategy for practice. You go out and practice here for 55-minute sessions, and then tomorrow single truck qualifying. But do you spend practice getting 
hooked up in the draft, or do you spend practice solo to try to get a good starting spot for the race tomorrow? And then I follow up. Uh, I think both. Um, I think that we're all going to go out and draft a little bit, make sure our truck handles good, and then I think that we're going to go and see what our truck has for all speed just to see what we can do, um, what we need to work on to make sure that we get a good qualifying spot. Um, I think qualifying here tomorrow is going to be kind of important um, for track position as um, last year you didn't quite see the too wide racing that we did at Daytona earlier this year. So um, hopefully we can get both lines working tomorrow if qualifying, um, if you don't qualify up front. Yeah, I'd say um, kind of the same as John Hunter. Qualifying is going to be a pretty big deal, I do believe. Um, but a lot of it does go back to the start of practice. I know first off, we all got to get through tech before we can start practice. Um, and after that is utilizing, you know, who you can work with good, who you know you can push, who you can pull around the racetrack and, and make the most speed. Um, obviously, I feel like every week we see it, the truck series gets tighter and tighter. So um, John Hunter was talking about the double file racing all around the racetrack, and that's something that um, I think I ex expect to see. Um, I don't think anybody's going to cut anybody any breaks, and it's going to be like that the whole race. So um, you're going to be able to work good, be able to get pushed really good, and, and not be out of, you know, out of shape by any means um, if that's what we'll work on. And just make sure we have good speed in our F-150 and we can do what we need to do come Saturday. You know, those guys pretty much said it all. You know, I think you'll see uh, the first practice be the, the busiest. Um, you know, get a couple of single runs, uh, mock runs, and then depending on the pack, uh, what trucks are in there, you know, you want to make sure that, um, you know, you simulate runs today that will be close tomorrow. Uh, you know, seven or eight is going to be close. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, when you get in a pack of 32, obviously things are going to change a little bit more. So, uh you know, this deal right here, we're going to be very picky on, on uh, which pack that we get up in. And, and then pro hopefully if uh, Shane likes what he sees, then we probably won't run the second practice. And you'll see that across the board, I'm sure. And for Daniel, I know you were on Sirius XM NASCAR radio yesterday morning. Um, but even still, the chase in the truck series has been a big buzz. Even this morning on the way in, people were saying that Daniel Hammer has to win tomorrow. Have you listened to what the fans have been talking about, what they've been talking about on the station this week? Or have you been trying to tune that out, not only on radio, but social media too? Yeah, I've tried to tune a lot of it out, to be honest with you. I'm pretty in in terms of what I need to do. Um, is it a must win? I don't think it's a must win, but it definitely make life a lot easier. Um, but honestly, I, I disconnected myself a little bit this week. Actually played two rounds of golf. Had a good time doing that and got away from everything else. My phone um, didn't ring. What's that? My phone didn't ring. I play golf. Are you any good? Do you play? Yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> I got a new golfing buddy, ladies and gentlemen. Um, no, but we just, just tried to, you know, not hide from our situation. We know what we need to do. So if people feel like we need to win the race, that's fine. Uh, I know what our jobs are and what we have to do to advance. We'll go to Kenny Bruce for a final question. Kenny Bruce with NASCAR.com for John Hunter and, and Daniel. With you guys you know, needing to advance and, and being in the shape that you're in, would you, would you race tomorrow's race any differently than if you were already guaranteed a spot? In the next round? Almost definitely. Um, if you're guaranteed a spot, you're going to try and conserve. Um, you don't, you don't want to mess up uh, your point standings or um, whatever it may be. But if you have a win like William, I, I think that um, he could go out there and try and do everything that he can to win. And I, I think that that's kind of what we're going to have to do is we have to go out there and try and control our own destiny of um, doing everything that we can. Um, to try and win the race and um, that that's pretty much all we can do is we can go back to our team and say hey I gave it my all we did our best and this is where we ended up yeah the same thing I mean all we can do here is control what we can control um, go into an approach in every situation that way whether it's practice qualifying in the race um, if we execute on all ends I, I see no reason why we shouldn't have a shot at it but if we had that win it would definitely change uh, kind of how we'd probably approach all three of those segments I just mentioned so um, but at the end of the day, kind of like John Hunter got to earlier, I think um, I'd rather be on the end we're on. Obviously, if you're one, that's even better. But um, the situation where we can go down swinging and not play in defense all day, I think it's going to be a good thing for him and I both. Gentlemen, good luck. Thanks for coming in this morning. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, guys.